Greetings. In this short video, we're going to talk about a quick uh, quality control check for top dressing sands that you're going to use during uh, uh, light top dressing or during aeration and uh, the simple methods that you might want to try at your site or give you a better understanding of what the labs are doing and uh, a simple way to analyze the data that's coming back from the labs or that a, a sand supplier uh, provides you so you can get an idea of whether the sand is uh, going to work well. And it's uh, one thing to get a sand that meets USGA specifications, which we always recommend that, but there's, uh, there's quite a range of values that you might get within USGA specifications, some which will turn out to be, uh, I think, will perform better if you're looking for firm surfaces, and that would be uh, a distribution that's well graded. And we'll show you uh, what, what we think is the, what, the best for that, give you a good firm surface. So let's take a look at a, um, a quick QC method. What we're going to use uh, for tools is a simple uh, pocket meter that you can get uh, at a variety of uh, locations. That's uh, good to this one goes up to 150 grams. We're only going to be using it around the 100 gram area. And with that uh, device, uh, we simply turn it on. We're going to use a uh, you need a few beakers or some sort of cups to uh, contain materials. We'll put the uh, beaker onto the scale at first, and then we hit the uh, tear to uh, remove the weight of the beaker itself. And then we're going to weigh 100 grams of the sand that we're going to uh, look at to put onto the sifts. And you want to be careful at this step because weighing out the sand that you put onto the sieves is going to directly influence what comes out. And then we'll, uh, we'll take a look at how the uh, sieve results uh, come back when we put those on the uh, shaker. This is a, a fairly standard sieve shaker. Uh, it's a commercial uh, quality, so it gives a good shake to the samples. Uh, what we have to do now is just load the sample uh, onto the sieves. I uh, have to take the top off, keep the uh, sand from just flying out of the sample. Throw the sample onto the top sieve, which is a two millimeter sieve on top. Close it up. Don't forget to put your uh, ear protection on in a situation like this one. This is a fairly uh, noisy device and we'll turn it on, give it a five minute run and our sieves will separate out the particles. Okay, the sieve shakers are done. So now all I gotta do is disassemble the stack and then we'll collect the, the sand and uh, weigh each one of the fractions to determine the distribution. What I like to do is just make a quick transfer from the sieves into uh, beakers that make it easier to handle the sands and for the weighing, the final weighing step. So now we're going to weigh and record uh, the values. I'm using a printout from the spreadsheet that's provided, the uh, links provided this update so that you can just write the numbers down on here and then enter them into the computer to give you a good QC uh, value. So we'll weigh each one of the uh, sieves from the point, uh, 1, 5, 0 0.15, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 1 millimeter uh, samples. Okay, it's easy as that. Now let's plug the numbers into the spreadsheet and see what we come up with. When you first open the spreadsheet, you'll get uh, a layout that looks like this one, and there's a series of areas at the top where you can enter the data, particularly in this one area under sand. Uh, we'll put the name of the sand in there. In this case, let's start off with a uh, problem green. Just as an example sand, and uh, it had 8.8. Once the data is entered, you'll see at the bottom of the screen there are two lines. This line corresponds to a USGA example, a good performing uh, root zone sand. At the bottom of the screen we have the 0 0.15, 0 0.25, 0 0.5, and 1 millimeter sieve sizes, and up the y-axis is a, a transformation of the accumulation of sand on those particular uh, sieves. So this is adding up uh, more sand with each one of the sieves. With the uh, targets being uh, for the uh, equation here where it says y equals 
we would like to see this number before the x uh, being equivalent to 1.2 and the r squared which uh, defines how linear those data points are we'd like to see it above 0.95 so those are the targets that we are looking for and this particular sand uh, fails uh, to meet the 1.2 guideline uh, right here uh, but it does have a good distribution of sand particles they fall nicely along a line but the slope of the line is too low now if we look up here at the uh, at the spreadsheet you can see that we're looking for 20 less than 20 percent of the on the USGA spec comparison we need to see uh, more than 60 percent we can see we only have 28.8 uh, percent and then for the um, uh, smaller sand, or the larger sand particles we'd like to see less than 10% in the one millimeter range and there's too many in the uh, one uh, millimeter range. So in general this uh, this line is not not adequate. Well, Let's take a look at a few good performing and uh, moderately well performing sands. In this case this is a Caltega 125 it's a product uh, Southern California uh, suppliers product and you can see that the line is uh, looks very nice the slope is 1.4 and the R square is 0 0.99 so it's a nice tight line and it fits those guidelines that we're looking for better than 1 1.3 1.2 on the slope and better than 0 0.95 uh, on the R square now let's take a look at the spreadsheet to uh, see how the data performs as we look down the USGA specs we can see that we want less than 20 percent on the 0.15 millimeter and we got 9.4 percent on the Caltech of 125 if you look at the combination of the 0.25 and 0.5 millimeter particle sizes, uh, we need to have greater than 60% and it reports 76%. And for the 1 millimeter particles, we see that uh, we need less than 10% and the report is 7.9%. Uh, so it falls right into USGA specs from all those uh, parameters. Well, here's a sand uh, that's a number 30 sand, so it's on the smaller size. As you can see down at the bottom, the 0.15 to 0.25 range, there isn't uh, many particles within those two size classes. The bulk of the particles are in the 0.5 millimeter range. So it's a very narrow uh, distribution of particle sizes and it flattens off above 0.5. Uh, this sand works well for sand top dressing to get it into the canopy uh, and to infiltrate uh, through the canopy nicely and doesn't leave a lot of particles on the surface. Uh, we can see that the slope is good. It's above 1.25 but the R square is at 0 0.86 so that's a little bit on the low side and you can see that curvy line so it's not a really great uh, distribution of particles uh, in that particular sand but it works well for getting sand if you're just top dressing uh, not necessarily for filling holes. The spreadsheet reinforces that information as we can see that there's uh, less than 20 percent uh, in the 0.15 millimeter range and if we look at the 0.25.5 millimeter range we see that there's 90 percent 91 percent almost all the particles are in that range so it's very tight in that uh, narrow range with the bulk of the particles in the 0.5 millimeter range meets USGA specs from this particular uh, component but when they're very narrow particle size distribution such as this one they tend to not firm up under foot traffic and that's the uh, that's what we have seen in people who have used this particular type of sand for greens construction. It works well for sand top dressing to dilute the organic matter through the seasons but we like to see something with a little bit uh, more spread out particle size distribution for the root zone. This other sand, the number 20 sand, is uh, another product that is uh, common out in our area out in the west and it has more particles in the 0.25 uh, millimeter range so it, it sort of flattens out the curve a little bit more. We can see that the R square is a little bit better at 0.88 and the slope is high enough at 0.173. Now let's take a look at the uh, comparison to USGA specs on this one. In this case we see that we're uh, well below the 20% uh, maximum for the 0.15 millimeter range particles. We're still in the 95 up in the high range for the uh, for the 0.25 and 0.5 millimeter range. There's a little bit of a shift. In this case, we see that the bulk of the particles are in the 0.25 millimeter range instead of the 0.5 millimeter range that we saw in the number 30 sand. And we see that we're well in range uh, for the one millimeter particles also at 0.4%. Uh, so all the particles still in that uh, 0 0.25, 0 0.5 uh, millimeter range. This time, uh, the bulk of the particles in the 0.25 instead of the 0.5. Now let's take a look at a blend of both the 30 and the 20 sand. 
as you recall, we had, uh, in one case, the number 30 sand had a high level of 0.5 millimeter particles, the number 20 sand had a high level of 0.25s, and when you blend those two together, you get a, a closer to a desirable root zone mix. You see the slope is 2.2, uh, we're targeting better than 1.2, so that's fine, and the R square is 0.94, very close to the uh, 0.95 and above uh, that we like to see. So certainly this uh, blend of number 2030 uh, is better for filling holes during aeration. Whether you're light top dressing with sand or you're heavily sanding and filling holes with sand, it's always good to use a USGA specification sand. Uh, this quick method of evaluating sands doesn't replace a full A2LA uh, USGA spec sand analysis conducted by uh, a certified lab, but it does give you a quick read on the different types of sands that are out there and maybe will help you to select sands uh, before shipping off a sample to the to the lab for a full analysis. And then during the delivery process, you may want to run a few samples and take a quick look at these uh, particle size distributions just to give you a better feel that you're getting the right kind of quality of sand from your uh, sand supplier. We hope this uh, video is helpful and take a look at the links associated with this video and the associated update that contains the uh, spreadsheet that we uh, demonstrated here.